it is almost 8 a.m. right now it's around 7 45 right now and I start my day off not at home but at an eatery it's called Baker and More and it's an amazing 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 place and I also decided to start my day off here is because at home I feel really distracted the last couple of days so I wanted to try a new scenery where I could work so maybe that helps because so the things that I have to do today the things we have to do today is I have to do some Texas work I need to update my taxes I also have to do some video work I have to do some scheduling for my YouTube videos when I'm going to make more YouTube videos and besides that I also have to schedule in a scouting moment and that will be today later today because I found a really really dope place here in Rotterdam which I had never found before and I wanted to check it out to see if I could make really dope pictures over there so that's what we are going to do later today and right now I ordered my tea I ordered my sandwich so I'm going inside. So, while I'm going to scout this location, because this location where we are at right now is just amazing more about that later but today I wanted to talk about something I've holding on to for a while now because I have this thing for a while now I have this thing for like one and a half months almost two months now and I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to incorporate it into my workflow into my YouTube video style and the thing that I'm talking about is This thing, this long barrel looking lens, the Probe Lens 24 millimeter. I have this lens for like, as I said, one and a half months, almost two months, and I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to incorporate this lens because this lens is a really, really special lens. Probe Lens 24 millimeter. This lens is, this lens is, interesting it's a very interesting lens the reason why i bought this lens is not because of the specs because the specs are really interesting but they didn't blow me away what did blow me away was the clips and the footage you can shoot with this lens because this lens on youtube is mainly used for commercial type product videos i really like watching them but i don't really like making those types of videos but I have to admit this lens the probe 24 millimeter lens can provide so many amazing shots I wouldn't get with any other lens and I felt like having such a lens in my kit in my camera bag will help me get those creative shots that I want inside of my vlog in the previous video if you have seen the previous video I used a couple of sequences I made a couple of sequences and actually in those sequences I actually shot a couple of pro plans footage pro plans clips but I didn't include them because I didn't felt like including them at the time but looking in hindsight those clips added in the sequences look really really dope because the angle the perspective of this lens is really different really creative in my opinion so adding that in my video style i felt like was the way to go but using this lens with my camera the canon eos rp the camera i'm shooting on right now is very difficult so I have been exploring this place for 30 minutes now and it looks really really dope. I saw pictures of this place before on Instagram and I really thought like it looks really dope. Let me check it out. So now that I'm here and I'm experiencing it, it looks really really dope. It's the I love the aesthetic of this place. This place looks amazing, especially when you look through the camera then it it looks just mind blowing to me because Rotterdam is a very modern city in terms of we have a lot of modern buildings and this place reminds me of the industrial side of Rotterdam but also the modern side of Rotterdam which is pretty dope so 
The past two months I've been testing the probe lens 24 millimeter and I really like this lens. This lens is really amazing in my opinion, but I can't deny that when I use the Canon EOS RP with the 24 millimeter probe lens, I ran into some problems. So the first problem I want to talk about with the Canon EOS RP and the probe lens is a stabilization problem. Like I mentioned in the previous videos, I mentioned it in the six month review video of the Canon EOS RP and in the flaws of the Canon EOS RP video. In both videos, I mentioned that the Canon EOS RP doesn't have in-body image stabilization. It doesn't have that. The only stabilization option the Canon EOS RP has is digital IS. And I think it was in the flaws of the Canon EOS RP video. I'm not really sure, but I think in that video, I showed you guys the difference between no digital IS and digital IS, which is pretty big in my opinion. The reason why I bring this up is the probe lens 24 millimeter doesn't have image stabilization. And the only stabilized option we have is digital IS and especially with the 24 millimeter probe lens being a macro lens if you are going to shoot handheld you will guarantee get shaky footage or at least a bit of shaky footage because it's a macro lens so it's really hard to get smooth footage with the probe lens 24 millimeter on top of the Canon EOS RP when you're shooting handheld what do I recommend to combat this problem I recommend having a slider and for any person out there with a camera who wants to use the 24 millimeter probe lens or has a 24 millimeter probe lens I really recommend getting a slider not only for Canon EOS RP users but for people in general who have a 24 millimeter probe lens because without a slider I wouldn't be able to get it so guys buy a slider because it will really become your best friend so I went back home because it started to rain outside. We are continuing the conversation inside for a little bit. So remember the video I talked about earlier, the six months with the Canon EOS RP video I made a couple of months ago. In that video, I made a statement that the Canon EOS RP is pretty decent when it comes to low light situations. And let me tell you, the probe lens 24 millimeter challenges the statement I put out in that video. Let's first address the elephant in the room, which is the 24 millimeter probe lens. The aperture starts at F14. The higher the aperture number, the smaller the lens opening will be and the less light will come into the lens. With the 24 millimeter probe lens starting at an aperture of F14, and it goes up to f40 which means less light comes into the camera which will make your footage look darker so keep that in mind every single time when i shoot on the canon eos rp i always shoot on 24 frames per second and every time i'm shooting on this frame rate i always have my shutter speed double the frame rate so every single time i'm using the 24 millimeter probe lens i shoot on 60 frames per second to get those smooth shots so i can later in post-production slow it down so every single time i use 60 frames per second I also have my shutter speed double that number, which is 120. The higher the shutter speed is, the darker your footage becomes yet again. So not only will our footage be darker because of the high aperture number, but also because of the shutter speed. The solution to that is having external light to make up for it. But that's the thing, you need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of light. And I mean a lot. I underestimated how much light you need so to give you guys some perspective right now when i was shooting this particular clip the clip you are seeing right now it was underexposed and i had to remove the grid i had to remove the diffuser and i had to bring up the light to 100 percent in order to even have decently looking footage and it didn't even look that decent at all what I did was I bumped up my ISO 
but we all know that when you are bumping up your ISO there will be grain at a certain point and the most recent newest cameras like the Sony's or the Canon EOS R5 those cameras are much better equipped to shoot at higher ISO numbers but the Canon EOS RP isn't on that level at all so this is where it came apparent that with using this 24 millimeter probe lens I am really pushing the Canon EOS RP to its limits when it comes to low light situation and having good footage out of the low light situation. It was very hard for me to use the Canon EOS RP with the 24 millimeter probe lens because I didn't, <laughs> so I wouldn't say I didn't understand, but I didn't fully realize how much light you actually need. And this showed me that using the probe lens 24 millimeter on the Canon EOS RP with a lack of lighting makes it really hard to make good footage. With that being said, it stopped raining right now. So I'm going to take this opportunity to go back to the location we were at early in this video and scout the place some more. So, I want to address something. In my honest opinion, I don't really know what I'm going to do with this lens. I have no idea. As I said, I didn't really thought about the additional gear because the slider, I already had the slider. And with the light situation, I just don't have enough light <laughs> to properly expose my footage. So I might have to buy another key light or I need to come up with another solution to light up my subject because this lens needs a lot of light and I don't have a lot of light external light I should say I have not made my definitive conclusion I don't know if I'm going to sell it or if I'm going to keep it I have no idea what I'm going to do but what I do know is that I'm going to test some more with this lens and really look if it's going to fit in my video style what do you think about the 24 millimeter pro lens do you like it do you dislike it have you tried the lens have you never tried the lens do you want to try the lens let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below i'm very curious to know what you guys think i'm going to scout this place a little bit more because i really like it and maybe i'm going to share some pictures i take over here at the end of this video but if i don't i'll see you guys in the next video